Hey guys, today I want to present a solution to the selection test from Malaysia for the Asia Pacific Math Olympiad 2024 problem 3. First of all, let's take a look at the problem statement. We are asked to find all functions from the integers to the integers such that f of x minus f of y is equal to f of f of y plus f of x minus 2y for all integers x and y. Throughout the solution, I want to denote this equation here by p of x, y. A natural approach when dealing with functional equations is to try to plug in values for x and y such that the two arguments are equal. And here this is indeed possible, namely if you plug in x equals 2 times f of y, we get that f of f of y is both on the left hand side and on the right hand side and therefore we conclude that this term here is equal to 0. So f of 2 times f of y minus 2y is equal to 0. When we come up with an equation of this form where we have on one side f of something and on the other side a fixed term, it's always a good idea to consider if our function is injective. Because if f is injective, then we know that the argument here must be constant. So we directly get that 2 times f of y minus 2y is equal to a constant c. In other words, we have that f of y is equal to y plus another constant c prime, where c prime is just equal to c divided by 2. Plugging in this equation into our original functional equation, we get on the left hand side x minus y plus c prime plus c prime, and the right side is equal to y plus c prime plus c prime plus x minus 2y plus c prime. We see that the x and y terms are cancelling out and therefore we are left with 0 is equal to 3 times c prime which implies c prime equals 0. And moreover if c prime is equal to 0 then this is a valid solution. So we have found our first solution f of x equals x for all integers x. Let's now go on to our second case where f is not injective. In this case we get that we find integers a and b such that f of a is equal to f of b but a and b are not equal or in other words without loss of generality we can say that a is less than b. We want to use this fact and therefore want to plug in a and b into our functional equation. And if we take a look at this equation here then we see that y is more often an argument than x and therefore our idea is to plug in a and b for y. We directly see that the left hand side and the f of f of y term stay the same. And therefore this implies that the last term here is also the same. So we get that f of x minus 2a is equal to f of x minus 2b. This equation here implies that our function is periodic with period 2 times b minus a. Let us define p to be the minimal period of our function. So we have that p is less than or equal to 2 times b minus a. This especially tells us that there are only a finite number of values our function can attain. And therefore, we know that our function f is bounded. Taking a look back onto our functional equation, this seems unlikely because on the right hand side we have two function values, while on the left hand side there is only one. This intuitively tells us that our function must be equal to zero at very many points. And indeed we are able to prove that f of f of y must be equal to zero always. We will prove this by contradiction. So at first assume that we can find a value for y such that f of f of y is greater than 0. Since our function attains only finitely many values and the term x minus 2 times y can attain every integer value, we can choose x in such a way that f of x minus 2y is maximal. But f of f of y greater than 0 tells us that f of x minus f of y is greater than f of x minus 2y. This contradicts our assumption that our right hand side is maximal and therefore this case here is not possible. In the same way for the case that f of f of y is less than 0 we get that the left hand side here is less than the right hand side and now if we choose x such that the right hand side here is minimal this is a contradiction again. We conclude that f of f of y is always equal to 0. This simplifies our functional equation a lot 
and is also a really strong tool to get more information out of this equation. We want one of these two arguments here in the function equation to be equal to f of y to use this equation here again. And we can do this by setting x equals f of y plus 2 times y. This tells us that f of 2 times y is equal to 0. So we know that f is equal to 0 for all even integers. And we can directly use this fact by plugging in y equals to 2 into our functional equation to obtain that f of x on the left hand side is equal to f of x minus 4. This equation here tells us that our period divides 4 and therefore p must be one of the values 1, 2 or 4. If p is equal to 1, we know that f is a constant function. And since we already know that f attains a value 0, we know that f of x is equal to 0 for p equal 1. We see that this is a solution to our functional equation and now we are ready to go on with the case that p is greater than 1. We are now interested in odd values for x. And first of all, let's consider the case that we can find an odd value for n such that f of n is equal to 0. Since n plus 1 is even, we know that this is also equal to f of n plus 1. And now taking a equals to n and b equals to n plus 1 here tells us that our period is at most 2 times 1 equals 2. This directly implies that f is the 0 function, so our period p is equal to 1. But since we are working in a case that p is greater than 1, this is not possible here. On the other hand, we know that f of f of y is always equal to 0. And therefore, this here implies that f of y must be an even value. This implies that for a case that p is equal to 2, our function is of the following form, namely f of x is equal to 0 for x even and 2n otherwise. Taking a look back onto our original functional equation, we see that the f of y term here is an even number. Therefore, the argument here on the left hand side and this argument here on the right hand side are of the same parity, namely the parity of x. In conclusion, the value of these two terms here are equal. And since we also have that f of f of y is equal to zero, this is indeed a solution. It is left to consider the last case that p is equal to four. Here, f of x is again equal to zero if x is even, but if x is odd, we can at first choose a value two times n1 for x congruent to one modulo four and two times n2 for x congruent to three modulo four. Since we are in the case that p is equal to four, we know that n1 is not equal to n2. And we have already figured out that n1 and n2 can't be equal to zero. Our functional equation tells us that f of x minus f of y is equal to f of x minus 2y. For a given value of y, we can choose x in such a way that x minus f of y is, for example, congruent to 1 modulo 4. Together with n1 is not equal to 0 and to n2, this must imply that if x minus f of y is congruent to 1 modulo 4, then this is also true for x minus 2y. In other words, we get that f of y is congruent to 2y modulo 4. For even value of y, we know the left hand side is equal to 0 and the right hand side is divisible by 4. So this equation holds. For y odd, we get that the right hand side is congruent to 2 modulo 4. This implies that our values n1 and n2 must be odd. With this constraint here, we know that f of y is congruent to 2 modulo 4 and therefore we also know that x minus f of y is congruent to x minus 2y modulo 4. Thus, this equation here holds and therefore all the solutions of this form are indeed solutions to our functional equation. So f is one of the orange solutions here and we are done.